I'm going to dive right in, and uh, we'll have plenty of time for discussion. And uh, I think this should be this should be a fun presentation. We love this material a lot. And uh, this uh, presentation we're giving is the uh, is based on a long article that's just been published in the Michigan State University Press book, Darwinism, Design, and Public Education. And it's the result of, um, as it happens, five years of research. So we, uh, we hope you enjoy this, and, uh, and we'll point you to that resource if you want to get more information than we're able to cover in our, our presentation here. Uh, the the <clears throat> uh, Time Magazine in 1995 had a cover story on what they called Evolution's Big Bang. And uh, th this, this uh, was... Uh, predicated by a recent discovery in China of some extraordinary fossils that uh, <clears throat> showed the Cambrian era animals with ex in exquisite detail. The, the, the preservation quality of these fossils was just incredible. And uh, these fossils were uh, confirmed and, and provided more information about an event that scientists have called the Cambrian explosion. Uh, and uh, they were found in southern China in a province called Chengjiang. Marcus has been there for a conference on this material in uh, the year 2000. And it's, it was 1999. And, uh, uh, and this, is, this is the site here with the, uh, you see the Chinese uh, markers here distinguishing the Cambrian and pre-Cambrian strata layers. And, uh, uh, and of course, the, the Changjiang was not the only big Cambrian find in the world. The other really famous find is the Burgess Shale. But uh, the Chinese were quite proud, and uh, uh, arguably so, the, uh, at the, the preservation quality of these fossils and the additional information that they provided about the Cambrian, which will be part of the basis of our talk today, because uh, in essence they showed uh, uh, that the Cambrian explosion was more explosive, uh, more sudden, broader in extent, than had previously been known, and many new representatives of d new phyla have been discovered as a result of these Cambrian fossils, new, uh, uh, new organisms, uh, things like fishes that we knew about before that we now know originated earlier and more suddenly. So we'll look at some of these, these data along the way, and, uh, and just right now I want to orient you. The Cambrian explosion takes place in about uh, the, uh, on the standard geological time scale at 530 million years ago and ends, uh, now they're thinking, uh, within 5 million years. Maybe a, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. Uh, from 5 million to 5, or 530 to 525 is the uh, increasingly accepted uh, time frame for the Cambrian explosion. Well, what exactly is the Cambrian explosion? Let's just orient ourselves a little bit more here. Uh, the Cambrian explosion refers to the geologically sudden appearance of many, uh, in fact, most of the major animal groups, the, what are called the, uh, the, the new the animals as represented by disparate or separate body plans. And if you think of a body plan, if you've heard that term tossed around, um, the, uh, a, a way to think of a body plan is as a distinctive set and arrangements of body parts or organs and tissues. And uh, on the slide here, we have three different examples of body plans, separate animal body plans. We have the chordates and the arthropods and the cnidarians, just three examples. And you see how disparate, different, are the different ways of organizing uh, body, body parts here. The chordates have their, their dorsal nerve cord, their internal skeleton. The arthropods are segmented, and they have an external skeleton just uh, for starts. And of course, the cnidarians, as represented by this beautiful jellyfish, have their own distinctive uh, mode of organization. Now, when, when uh, paleontologists and taxonomists talk about body plans, they're usually talking about um, uh, differences that are at the phyla or class, phyla, subphyla, or possibly class uh, level in the biological hierarchy. We're talking about the origin of the major divisions in the animal kingdom, the major separate divisions. So not the, 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 the species, or, or uh, genera, but rather the phyla, uh, subphyla, or classes. Are, and uh, the Cambrian explosion is marked by the sudden appearance of, of completely novel body plans, that is, completely novel phyla coming into the fossil record. And uh, 
So we're, what we want to do now in our, in our talk, and we have so, a little more time than the other sessions. We've got the full hour and a half, and we're going to uh, kind of pass back and forth different parts of this, talk to each other, and leave plenty of time for discussion as well. We want to do th three things. We want to talk about the Cambrian explosion, and in particular, we want to address three questions. Why is this so extraordinary? Why is the Cambrian explosion so extraordinary? And uh, Marcus is going to address that by describing the key features, uh, the descriptive features of the Cambrian explosion event in the fossil record. The second thing we're going to address is why are science so, scientists so perplexed by that? And in particular, we mean the, the uh, orthodox neo-Darwinian scientists, because as you'll see, the data from the Cambrian contradict Darwinian expectations and predictions at every turn. And I wanted to say almost, but really it's, it's let's say virtually every turn. This is really a, a tremendous challenge to the Darwinian uh, theoretical framework. And given that, we want to then in the end talk about how we might better explain the data from the Cambrian explosion within a design theoretic framework. That is, we want to offer intelligent design as an explanation for the Cambrian and its key features and explain the rationale that is, explain why design should be considered as not only an explanation, but we're going to...